Hi, I'm Melissa Hartley and I'm Curator of Historical and Modern Art at the Art Gallery of Western Australia. Welcome to AgriTV. The collection at the Gallery numbers more than 17,000 works of art and the Gallery takes care of these artworks for the public and also visitors to Western Australia. With so many works in our collection, we can only have a fraction of them on display at any moment. But we do regularly change those displays and add new works to our exhibitions. We've now grouped the Agri Collection into five sections. And with so much to see, it'll be different every time you visit the gallery. As we say, there may be five paths, but many different journeys. Agua Modern showcases the period of great change and experimentation in 20th century art. In this episode of Curator TV, I'll introduce you to some of the main themes from this period and also some of the great works of art that you'll encounter. In Agua Modern, the works have been hung mostly in themes or subject groups in order to show how this artistic experimentation played out over the 50 year period from 1920 through to 1970. The State Art Collection is particularly strong in figurative works that is, works that look to the physical world for their subject matter. However, the traditional subjects of the human figure, landscape and still life were rendered in anything but a traditional manner. This was a period of artistic experimentation where artists looked for new ways to depict old subjects. But they also developed new modes of expression and probably the best known is that of abstraction. Some of the key artists you'll encounter in Agua Modern who developed these new modes of expression include, in Australia, Margaret Preston, Sidney Nolan, Joy Hester, Guy Gray Smith and Fred Williams, and internationally, Stanley Spencer, Giorgio Morandi, Henry Moore and Jean Arp. In Agua Modern as well, you can see the experimentation as it happened across a range of media, such as painting, sculpture, drawings and prints and the decorative arts. The first theme that the visitor to Agua Modern will encounter is that of the still life. Now a painting of a vase of flowers may seem like a fairly mundane subject matter, but for Australian artists in the 1920s like Margaret Preston, Grace Cossington Smith and Kathleen O'Connor, the painting of a still life was anything but mundane. In fact, the close focus on objects on a table allowed them the opportunity to treat it as a mini laboratory and to focus in on key aesthetic issues like line and colour, shape or form. One of the main subjects in Agua Modern is the human figure. We have works of art that deal with the figure in many forms, whether that be an individual portrait, an image of people in a particular space such as a city square or the landscape, or images of the human figure that carry perhaps a religious or spiritual meaning. In the main section of Agua Modern, you'll encounter these images of figures. You'll be able to see works that range from the classicism of the French sculptor Mayol, and also the paintings of John Nash and Arthur Murch. You'll also be able to compare works which deal with the human figure in a different way. Be that Henry Moore with his nature-inspired reclining figure that seems somewhat very simplified. We're forced to ask, is this a figure? Is it perhaps a landscape? And also the work of Peter Lanyon, who actually entombs his figures within the landscape. Interestingly, when the gallery bought the Henry Moore in 1963, debate raged in Perth about whether this was actually a sensible purchase for the gallery, which seems extraordinary now when we think of it as one of the great works of the 20th century. The display in Agua Modern moves from the timelessness of these works to the undoubtedly contemporary. As in William Roberts' depiction of people feeding the pigeons in Trafalgar Square and John Brack's study of ballroom dancers, British Modern. Agua Modern has many more works which take the human figure as their subject and include some of the gallery's best loved works such as Triptych Alice by Charles Blackman, Russell Drysdale's The Gatekeeper's Wife and Black Beauty by Nicky de saint Phalle. While the 20th century was a period of great experimentation and radical expression for many artists, there was also a conservative strand, mostly in the practice of landscape painting. However, by the 1940s in Australia, the landscape was being looked to as a new subject matter, as a vehicle to give expression to a new sense of nationalism or perhaps the expression of a sense of place. 
The landscape was a great subject for a new generation of artists that included names such as Sidney Nolan and Arthur Boyd and also in Western Australia, Guy Gray Smith and Howard Taylor. But Aquamodern is not all about figuration. Abstraction was a very strong component of art practice in the 20th century. In Australia, many artists developed an abstract practice, from Grace Crawley and Ralph Balson in the late 1930s, through to the gestural abstraction of Ian Fairweather and Roger Kemp, and finishing with the hard-edged abstraction of Robert Jacks. I hope you enjoy Agua Modern and this exciting period in art. If you'd like to find out more, head online to the gallery's website.